Hey guys, welcome back to Nihon. As you can clearly see, I'm not at my home right now. Uh, but I just wanted to take this opportunity to talk about uh, the third part of this video about the catch 22 situation. And this is about the emergency contact conundrum. As you can see, I'm back at home now. Uh, obviously, the setting is different. Uh, um, and I've taken a shave and blah 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 um, yeah I just decided that it was not really a good idea to you know vlog or you know record the video when I was walking especially in the middle of the night uh, so here we are back at home I just like to apologize first of all for the delay in getting this video out um, we were trying to deal with few things here uh, and I was trying to you know get my new computer set up so that took a little bit more time than expected so here we are right so as I said uh, this video is essentially around the um, the emergency contact conundrum that we were facing uh, when we had to sign up for the house right so first of all uh, the same disclaimers from my previous videos in this catch 22 series apply uh, I would suggest you know go ahead and take a look at those videos I already put out two parts in case you don't want to go there uh, this I'm just I just cut out a small piece of the summary and then I'll put it for your consideration so here we go foreigner friendly real estate agency requires the foreigner to do to know Japanese language or to have a Japanese friend uh, again Apparently, they don't speak English in such places. Uh, the English talking agencies and the houses that they offer was pretty much outside my budget. Okay, now that you sort of catch up uh, with what has happened till now, uh, let's get into the actual contract signing part of the uh, story, right? Um, just to be clear, right? You, I mean, I could, I could have signed a contract even without having this emergency contact person available but then uh, the issue is that I we would have only one key right and it sort of makes our life a little bit difficult because uh, you know coordination and things like that uh, in case my wife want to go somewhere uh, those sort of things becomes very difficult or when I come back home let's say for example and uh, I find that I'm uh, my wife is not at home right so I I basically wanted this to be done properly. I reached out to my company HR and asked her if she's okay to be my emergency contact and she was okay with it because uh, she did not understand or she did not know what exactly was the company asking for, the, uh, the real estate company that is. I was feeling pretty confident and I thought, you know, that's settled, right? Uh, the thing is, uh, the bigger issue for us at that point of time was that uh, we did not have really a local number, right? And uh, uh, I told him that, uh, that I told my agent at that point of time that I really need to get this contract signed uh, because without that I can't get a cell phone contract done uh, because I need the residence card or Thairu card as they call it here. Uh, to actually sign up for a phone number so he sort of grudgingly agreed and said okay you know what uh, get your phone number and when you come back uh, later you can update the contact details uh, you know uh, I, it was, I actually offered him can I, can I give you my line and he was like uh, you know uh, no that's not going to work uh, so effectively um, we did not have a local account also at that point of time. Uh, I said, can I pay in cash? And he was like, uh, no way, that's not uh, going to work like that. You need to provide either a bank account detail, which is Japanese, or a credit card, which is international. So we sort of decided, okay, you know, for the time being, let's use this, uh, uh, let's use our international credit card and then move on. Uh, and he was okay with that. Um, so we, we finally... Uh, I started filling out the contract and when we came to the section of emergency contact uh, I filled in the name of my company HR, her phone number, her uh, official address 
and started moving on to the next section which I don't remember uh, because it's all in Japanese but then my agent stopped me and said hey listen you need to fill in the home address of this person and you need to provide details like her uh, say date of birth for example and uh, her residence card number or her you know the thing national ID number something of that sort but the point is yeah uh, they wanted far more details than what I was thinking is needed for an emergency contact and that is when like my confidence went from like you know up here hundred percent down to like you know a zero because I didn't want to really ask somebody for their personal details so uh, I was sort of you know in, in a fix but then uh, the agent said yeah if needed I can talk uh, and convince this person then I asked him using Google Translate that uh, you know we have signed up the the guarantor contract right um, so why do you need this so basically what he said at that point of time is that this is mandatory for all the people who wants to rent an apartment and especially for foreigners so this is there is no way I can you know get past this particular uh, roadblock um, but I said okay you know what uh, let me reach reach out to some of my friends who are in Tokyo is that uh, something that you can live with and he said okay sure I mean as long as they're not living in you know uh, some other city like Osaka or uh, Kyoto it should be fine so I decided to message uh, uh, Satake-san who was who was my classmate in uh, during my MBA and uh, sort of messaged him give him send him a long message and then send him a picture of this contract and he immediately responded that uh, this is like a guarantor contract I told him that it's not really a guarantor contract it's more like a emergency contact thing and uh, maybe once you talk to the agent it will be clear um, but uh, because it was holidays he couldn't respond on time and so he he took uh, some time to respond back and said okay uh, he'd like to talk to the agent uh, so I think a couple of days down the line uh, the agent came to our hotel uh, to you know finish the signing up signing up part because I needed this little seal called Inkan or Hanko which was uh, still being you know made so I need to put that seal it's sort of a way to register yeah, in any case yeah uh, so I I was like okay uh, uh, once the agent comes let's let's talk to this guy um, meanwhile what I did was uh, I took this contract and went to went to the bank to open a bank account and they said no I mean we need this details the address details to be updated on the Tsaryu card even though I just signed the contract uh, but the issue was it did not have the uh, the the hanko seal on it or the inkan seal on it so i thought okay let me just try my luck and went to the the me and gina we went to the city office uh, showed the contract and said we need to update this address and they just agreed directly and we were like super happy because that's the first time we actually had to do something in japan without having to uh, jump through hoops uh, I don't mean any disrespect here, it's just that uh, certain things as a foreigner uh, it's very difficult for us to understand. Um, so we got the address updated but it was just too late to go back to the bank so we just decided to go back to the hotel. Uh, on the way we came across a Docomo shop uh, and we got our phone number because the details on the Tsairu card was updated and we had international credit card so it sort of helped us with the uh, getting the phone numbers uh, right away right uh, so that two things were like settled uh, the next day we went to the bank uh, because the information was updated on the Thairu card we could open an account uh, immediately um, and although I applied for a credit card uh, I have not heard back from them yet and it's been nine weeks so I don't think I'll be getting that credit card but it's fine uh, we got our cash card and debit card so financially we are okay at this point of time in the sense that uh, you know if uh, my wife needs to make a purchase she can use the cash card 
or I can use the debit card or the other way around. Anyway, coming back to the main story, uh, all these issues were fixed, right, in terms of getting the number, the bank account. So we could provide this information to the agent. Uh, but again, this emergency contact thing was sort of getting to us. Um, so when the agent finally came to the hotel to take our Inca and Seal, we told him, right, listen, we got the phone number and the account, can you update that information? So we did that right away. Um, and what we also uh, decided to do was like, you know, give a call to my friend Satake san. Uh, big thanks to him anyways. Um, so yeah, we called him and the agent talked to him for a few minutes and then he explained to him what exactly it is uh, that he's required to do. Uh, it's more like, uh, I mean, what I understand from the document is it's more like a, a way to guarantee that this person is go not going to be a troublemaker or if this person, like the foreigner falls sick, there is somebody in Japan who can like, you know, watch for him. Now, there are issues with this, right? Uh, I, having done an international MBA, could meet people from Japan and was lucky enough to meet a, a lot of people from different countries. Think about a person who's coming here for the first time, who does not have any local contact. Uh, that makes it really difficult for that person, you see, uh, finding that house and things like that. And I'm not, I cannot say that this is what happens in all of Japan, but I can tell you this is what has happened with me when I wanted to find a house in Atsugi. Uh, any case, it worked out for me uh, because uh, when the agent handed back the phone to me, uh, Satake-san was like, hey, listen, it's not uh, really a guaranteed thing. Um, and, uh, just send me the document and I'll uh, happily, you know, uh, update the document and send it back. So although, yeah, the issue is solved for me, I just want to hear from people out there if they have faced similar issues and, you know, how did they deal with this? Uh, and, and obviously, um, see, as a person who's a, who's new to Japan, there is possibly better ways of doing, thing and doing things and I'm hoping that I can hear from you all, right? So in conclusion, we were super happy that this was settled because we got one key. Uh, which basically allowed us to, you know, uh, move in our stuff and uh, get our furniture, which, by the way, is another interesting experience, to be totally honest. Uh, so maybe I'll make a video about that. Uh, and we moved in uh, pretty much, you know, uh, the the next week itself, and uh, here we are. We are back at, uh, we are in our home. So this is our uh, little story. Maybe I'll... Um, I'll create a conclusion, right, uh, just to let you know what has happened since we got the, you know, the issue of emergency contact, uh, the local phone number, the bank account, and all those things sorted out. All right, thanks, guys, and uh, as, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, do remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon. Um, I know I've been lagging behind in terms of creating the video, but then I've been extremely busy. And um, again, no excuses, but uh, I, I do have few ideas for good videos and I hope uh, you do enjoy them as much as I enjoy making them. So thank you again, guys. Uh, see you in the next one.